call <coughs> to order the regular meeting of the Camp Local Board of Education on Monday, June 17, 2024. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. That's what we call the roll. motion to accept the minutes of the regular meeting May 20th, 2024 and the special meeting June 6th, 2024 as written. I a second? I'll second. Any questions or concerns? Mr. Chatsel, call the roll. Mr. Chatsel? Aye. Dr. Nolan? down below, we had 22 students in my program this year, 12 of them returned from last year, and 10 of them were new students this year. Um, it was a pretty even mix between seniors, juniors, and sophomores. I had one student who had an IEP, and I also had one student who was on a 504. So we did have kind of a wide range of students with different needs going on. 
The thing that uh, I'm most proud of is that when we started the school year, the students of my roster were deficient 61 and a half credits. And by the end of the year, we had recovered 58, 59 of those credits. So I was very proud of that because the kids, these are students who don't traditionally like school and it's hard for them. And for them to actually want to work and try to achieve the goal of graduation, that's a huge positive in, in my book. Um, eight out of eight seniors graduated this year. And that, obviously, I'm very proud of. And it was a hard, hard, hard fall for a lot of them. And so looking forward, though, two of them are enrolled at Stark State. Three of them currently are employed part-time, and two of them already have full-time jobs. So I think they're in, heading in the right direction. Uh, as of the end of the year, we had 85% of the initial credit courses passed. So that, again, is helping the kids for next year because they're not only receiving their credits or earning the credits that they've missed in the past, but they're also passing their credits currently. So they're getting out of a hole that they may have been in. And it's giving a lot of them a fresh start going into next school year. Uh, after my first year, when I was here in the building, I kind of just wanted to see where we were at as a baseline. And at the end of the year, I just went through and quickly did my own little average. And the GPA at the end of last year was a .74. That's passing, barely, by the skin of your teeth passing, but passing. And so obviously that's not where we want to be. This year, I'm pleased to say that we've got that average GPA up to 1.78. So almost a full point. And hopefully next year, 2.0 is, is, is well within, within our range. Uh, we had one of our students that came back to the main campus halfway through the school year. And part of uh, the West Campus is giving the students opportunities to work their way back into a high school setting or into a CTE program or whatever they want to do. It's not, you're not locked into the West Campus. If you really want to come back, great, we will find a pathway and we will help you get there. And so one of them did come back halfway through the school year, and we have another student who's gonna be transitioning back to the high school for next school year. So he completed one year and he'll be back for, for next year. So students are having the opportunity to get back into the high school setting. We had three varsity letter winners. So we have kids that are participating in extracurriculars, which I think is a very positive and uh, next year, one of the big things that I'm excited about is that we've got the opportunity to have some sophomores enrolled in CTE programs. And that was something that I really was hoping that we would be able to get accomplished for next year. Because for a lot of these kids, maybe the math, science, social studies, English isn't their avenue, but something in the trades or something in the arts, or th that might be their, their path forward. And so helping get them in, getting them into a CTE program, I think is a good stepping stone for those students. They will have a half day at CTE, and then they will spend the other half of their day back with me doing their academic core content online. So we're gonna try that next year, and I'm really excited about that. I think it's gonna go well. We did have an opportunity to take some learning outside of the classroom. Um, each nine weeks I had an activity planned for them where we were going to take the kids outside of the school setting because I believe that they can learn a lot when they're out at particularly the Akron Camp Builders Expo. That was a wonderful event that we had early in the year. We took a group of kids up for that and they got to see different trades in, in action. Uh, my second activity we went bowling. That was a reward activity for behavior, positive behavior and and then we went to the McKinley Museum and Planetarium. That was a history and science lesson. And finally, our end of the year was another PBIS reward. Students had to earn those activities. They weren't just given out. It was a, a reward type system. You served and got a number of points each nine weeks. You got the reward at the end. The support services that Dr. King, uh, Mr. Yagley has set up with Dr. King, he's been a, a tremendous asset for us up there. I actually got a, a boxing heavy bag donated for the program and the kids really took advantage
answer that. It's great for them to get some anger out, frustration out, uh, energy at times. It just needs to get something, get that out. So that was a good thing. Like I mentioned earlier, um, 2024, 2025, we are going to have a CCD option for these students. And so we're going to be really, really happy to do that. Um, the back side. I'm just going to kind of give you a quick little overview of my goals for next year. I want a 100% graduation rate for the seniors. That's never going to change. We're always going to do that. I want to see the CTE pro students perform well in their program, and I want to see them complete their program and ultimately get their credentials when they graduate. And we had 85% of our credits earned back. I want 100% of our credits earned back for next year. And I also want 100% of our credit, initial credits passed for next year. And I think both of those are in the realm of possibility. So how am I doing that? Well, it's, uh, it's a lot of patience. It's a lot of forgiveness. Uh, but more importantly than that, it, it's what I like to call consciousness-based tools. These are things that help the kids to truly understand their reality, the situation that they're in and where they are at in life. And then from there, addressing issues that they may have and finding solutions or finding things, what hopefully finding things that are a much more positive way to deal with stress in life, a much more positive way to deal with trauma in life, a much more positive way to deal with any kind of issues that they may be facing rather than self-medication. Because unfortunately we do see a lot of self-medication right now with our youth So what I'm really trying to do, and it's a very, very difficult thing, I'll admit, is I'm trying to teach them how to become more aware of their own reality and the steps that they can take to change that reality and to make their life better. And through those consciousness-based educational tools, over time, we're going to see this continue to improve. We're going to see results that we, we didn't expect. I can promise you that. So. If you have any questions about what we're doing, if you would like a more in-depth kind of demonstration or uh, demonstration, of, well, demonstration, of course, you're always welcome to stop by and see what we're doing. Uh, but I'd be happy to sit down and talk a little bit more in depth about uh, the program up at the West Campus. So, well, actually, I had an opportunity to go in like three times last year, and it was amazing to see the change from the first time that I went in to that middle of the year, the second time, and then the end of the year. And at first the kids kind of came in and they just kind of went to their places. And then when I went in the next time, they wanted to talk to Mr. Eichel. It's like, Mr. Eichel, this happened. For Mr. Eichel, I did this. So the connection that I saw between you and the kids, you know, it was amazing to see that grow over the year. So if you get a chance, though, definitely go and see the program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Because, I mean, obviously this is a success, right? So mm -hmm. thank you, congratulations to you, congratulations to you, because I know you. this is part of who one of your grades was. So yeah, but the, 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 great this, program. This, this, is, this is great work, and, and if that, I mean, if it's, listen, Greg's here talking about the success. Mm -hmm. No, the work. And, and I'm glad you said the word grace because the grace that he had to show and the things that he had to do sure. on a daily basis. And it takes the right person to do this because, and, and you just mm -hmm. alluded to it in there, you have to be willing to know that these kids are not, this isn't personal with you. They're, this is their life and they are frustrated about it. And to have someone that will love them enough that it's a blank slate the next day when they walk back in and is gonna make sure they're successful, that, that's what Greg has done. He, he is more than just a teacher to those kids. He is, he's their lifeline here at the school. He's their mentor, he's their friend, he's their, and that's what these kids need, and, and Greg's done a wonderful job of that. So we really appreciate it. Any other questions? Greg, I know you said um, you know, our goal is driving them back here. Mm -hmm. From the kids' perspective, do some of the kids actually maybe find that a better environment for Absolutely. them? Absolutely. Or that they, I don't actually, like I'm hearing the environment, <laughs> imagine some of the kids maybe, like maybe it's not their goal no, and, and, and I, always, I always tell them, I said, if this is the best space for you, and this is where you feel like I can be successful here, by all means, if this is what you're gonna do for the next two or three years, great.
But if it comes to a point where you're like, mm, I'm ready to move on, I'm ready to try something new, great, we'll find the supports that will get you there. So it's really, it's, it's a very individualized program. It's, it truly is what each individual kid and needs. Maybe I think some of them, I think many of them get overwhelmed. Um, they, they've reached a frustration level in school where, man, I just, I don't know if I'm gonna get it done, and so I quit, or I give up, or now I'm gonna be a behavior problem, or I'm just gonna run around and, and cause problems because they've checked out. But now, having them in a more small setting, um, having them, having the opportunity to be there is a routine to the day, but it's not the typical 42 minute bell, which they don't, they don't like particularly. And so our, our day flows differently each day, but there's a routine. We're gonna do this, and now we're gonna do this, and now we're gonna do this, or at least we're gonna try to do those things each day. And sometimes we get there, sometimes we don't. But the, I do think that the kids, they feel safe there, they feel supported there, I, I don't see many of them opting to come back because maybe for the first time they're actually seeing that I can do this and I can be successful here because it's a small group. I'm not distracted by all of the other things going on in the high school setting. Safe space. It is. I try to make it that, and I try to make it a calm space. It's not always a calm space, <laughs> but that's the goal. Uh, and, you know, because in a stressful environment, we don't. always in the, like in this shell of protection and for a lot of these kids they're just in this safe zone that they're not going to step outside of until they feel comfortable and until they feel safe and then there they start to do that they start to break out of that shell a little bit and they start to see, I've been able to see their interests and now I can start to say okay these are the things that maybe you might want to think about doing So that's, that takes a long time. And for some of the students, I've had them now for two years, and it's taken two years to get to this point. Uh, some of the kids, they latch on just like that. So you just never really know. It's what, like I said, it's what each individual student needs. We try to provide that for them. And then the last question for you, Dan. Yeah. Sorry, Ms. Adam. I really appreciate that. I'm trying. I'm trying. So, and you can, guys, even this here, like this is not, like, I mean, putting this together for you, He's not on the clock. I mean, like his his contractual. I mean, this is all just extra of him coming to, to kind of brag on his kids and what his kids have accomplished. And so, great. Yeah. Please, if you have any questions, uh, my email and phone number is on there. If you want to reach out to me this summer, I'm happy to talk. And like I said, mm -hmm. I, I do I do like talking about what we're doing up there. I really enjoy that, uh, and, and I'd be happy to talk more about it with any of you. So, Craig, I got one last question. Sure. Do you see much transients? In Kids that leave in here going to McKinley or here leaving here going to Glen Oak or um, from from my program no um, once the students kind of has, have started the year they were with me basically for the whole year yeah. I did have a couple of students that didn't finish the year off for mm -hmm. different reasons one of them moved and the other one just got himself in a bit of trouble but okay. um, no they're I, I I keep them yeah pretty much for the whole year Good. we did have a couple of students that came up halfway through.
come in there. <laughs> yeah, if you sneak out, there's no issues. It's, 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 it's very nice to meet you. Nice to see you guys. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks. Hearing on the public.
the school net state fund 451 we received an additional 455 dollars for that um, so we have to increase appropriations in that fund to spend them and then the last one our pressure funds um, because we're spending uh, the remaining our pressure funds on our custodial salaries so that way we um, can utilize some of our general fund dollars for some additional initiatives because our pressure has an expiration of september um, we tried to spend those funds down as quickly as we could we're spending them a little faster than what we originally appropriated for in September, so um, additional appropriation increase of 274,715 in the Art Besser Fund. So I recommend those modifications for Jewel. Exhibit, I'm sorry, item E. We don't have an exhibit for that one. This is a transfer from the general fund to the athletic fund. The last two years we've done transfers from general fund to athletic. Uh, we've had the discussion in the past about it. The number of sports that we offer um, is nearly impossible. Um, we don't set ticket prices, our league sets the ticket prices, um, and I don't think we want to set ticket prices, set our ticket prices um, to the level to break even in the athletic fund because no one would attend our events if we raised our ticket prices to 20 bucks or anything like that. Um, so the board in the past has been um, supportive of all of the athletic programs that we do offer. Um, and it has been willing to transfer general fund to help support the athletic fund. Um, a couple of things that have increased that we've seen, Brett has a, Mr. Yeager has a list over there. Um, our officials fees have gone up significantly. Last year, I believe we spent about 30,000. This year, we're slightly over 40,000 um, fees for all of our supplies, just like I talked about in the food service fund. Cost of pretty much everything athletics has gone up. Get a motion to accept items A through F on the treasurer's report. I'll make a motion. Second. I'll second it. Questions or concerns? Yeah, Jason, I got a question. Um, busing situation. So this new bus rolls in. We'll retire one, right? Or two. We, where do we sit? I mean, how how many extra buses do we have right now that we aren't using for routes? I believe we have four extra buses right now. Um, yeah. We use them for different things. Yes, we, we've experienced that as, as well as other teams not being able to get to us. 
But just excited and now hopefully they're all getting a little chance to enjoy summer here a little bit and, and relax and get ready for next year. But um, just a few things, Jason touched on this. The league is going to raise ticket prices uh, coming up for this year. The Pac-7, we're gonna go from $7 for adults to $8. We're gonna go from $4 and change up to $5. Just to make sure you're aware though, one of the things we're doing to help with families, um, we can still have our own family passes here at home. Those are only for home events the, when you're on the road but also senior citizens. So we have a senior citizen pass that people can pick up here that gives them admission into our games. If they show that pass at another league event, so say it's a softball, or not softball, volleyball game at Tribe, or a football game at Manchester, they're gonna get into the student price. So it'd be a $5 for senior citizens as they go. And that would be the same thing here. Same thing's true, middle school, we're raising those middle school ticket prices from $5 to $6 and $3 to $4. And it really is to offset some of the costs that you see there, but we're also raising official fees. Like we did a look around, not us, but the, the league did a look around and to stay competitive with the EDC, with the Federal League, with the Wayne County League, with the IDC, we are gonna have to raise 10 to $15, $10 for middle school and $15 for varsity, because just like anything else, we're struggling to get officials. So that's gonna eat that cost up there a little bit or that extra increase, but that's why that's coming in here. If anybody asks since, uh, Last data we have, since 2000, ticket prices have raised from $5 to $8. And I can tell you, my last year being the head football coach, um, which, which would have been 2010, a football back then cost us $56, a good game football, that now costs $110. Um, I could get football helmets for the program, a good one for 115, now you're up over 200 even touch it. And some of the ones that are coming out that are really, you're talking $350. So, and that's just one sport, but we all know football, the equipment's the most expensive. So just give me some idea of why some of those numbers are there on that. Um, also while we're talking sports a little bit, had a big meeting, uh, Coventry has applied to join the Pac-7. We had two schools that, that we interviewed that, that talked with us. There was a meeting of all the principals, athletic directors, and superintendents of the Pac-7. Coventry put on a fantastic um, presentation. I think I shared it with you guys in my, my updates, but where they talk about where they are enrollment, where they are with open enrollment, where they are with the sports that they offer and things like that. The general consensus coming out is we were all gonna come back to our board, make sure that our boards didn't have any issue with it. Um, and if you do not, we're gonna move forward and say that we are, are good with Coventry here joining the league. It gives us an 18 league. They would be replacing CBCA. They would not be starting with it though for the students. And so we have to give them the yes so they can withdraw from their current league and come from, they start with the 2026, 2027 school. What was the other team? Um, the other team was Mogador. Mogador. Yep, Mogador. And first of all, Coventry's presentation was very complete. Jump, but the biggest thing, Coventry offers, like Mogador doesn't have soccer. Mogador didn't have some of the other sports that we want a complete experience for all of our kids. And so Coventry really does provide that for us there with everything. Travel time is about 60 <coughs> minutes shorter than CBCA, where we were maybe 20 minutes shorter than CBCA. And we are the second away from them beyond Triway, so. Is the CBCA gonna be next year, or is it nope. not till 26, 27, or CBA? Yep, so CBCA is technically out of the league right now. So they are technically, this was their last year in the league. The agreement we made with them was that we would still play them in football one more year non-league. You will see us playing CBCA in football. It will not count towards the league championship or anything like that, but we will be playing them football this year. All other sports, if we still play them, will just be a pickup. Like, but they are out of the league. So technically this year we are a 17 league and we will be a 17 league until, and again, everybody was going back, but coming out of that meeting, I, everybody felt pretty good that they could go back and have a conversation with their board. And CDC, because their presentation, or not, I'm sorry, Coventry's presentation, they had their curriculum director, they had their high school principal, they had their athletic director, they had their elementary school principal there, they had their superintendent, and they just put on a first class. And one of the things, there's always issues whenever you have a sports league. They, they 
seems like people we could work with. If there was an issue and we needed to address, we could come together and talk, and everybody felt very good about that. And I have to tell you, I've been a, an administrator now in two different leagues, being in the EDC and uh, um, here. I don't know that I've ever seen a time when everybody agreed <laughs> on something, and uh, everybody walked out agreeing on, on, on this at Cubs. It was a great fit. So just kind of keep you in the loop there. Another thing, um, and I just want to say thanks to Nick, um, we are looking to upgrade um, and we're going to use permanent improvement funds for this for next year um, to a system called Angel Track. And this is to increase and improve our bus camera system, not only inside but outside of our buses. Um, it is one of the areas I think as we really examine and look at our weaknesses, especially in the area of security, this was an area where we could do better and we want to take this opportunity with permanent improvement. It, it's a big cost, it's $125,000, but for our children that ride those buses and for the safety of our community, I, I think this is money well spent. We have it budgeted, set aside within permanent improvement, um, and I, so we're, we'd like to move forward with that. That's, you're gonna see that coming up here. Just wanted you to know what's going on there with that. Um, our summer projects are coming along great. As you can see down there, they've already torn out the tennis courts, they've broken ground on the H uh, VAT facility, um, renovated that shed area over there to make it better um, in the stadium. The work going on over at um, the, the tennis courts for the tennis locker room, the golf facility, really, really good things, and we're getting it done at a fraction of the cost. So just really appreciate his credit to uh, Mr. Noel in the back. Good week, worse than why. That's so <laughs> funny. Air so, yeah, air conditioning is working well. So got that ready to go. And then just a reminder, Mark C. Perna is a guest speaker that we have coming in. He's that generational expert. We are hosting, I'm really excited about this, this Business Leader Educator Summit, August 16th, if you can be here. 7.45 to 11.45, we'd love to have you. Combination with Louisville teachers are coming over here, ready to go, you get to say hi to some of your uh, former teachers. Louisville Fair with Sandy Valley, us, the Star County Ed Partnership and the Star County Economic Board of Economic Development. I think it's gonna be awesome. Really, really looking forward to this opportunity and I think some really cool things are gonna come out of it. So just a reminder on that, 7.45 to 11.45 there on the uh, 16th. And other than that guys, just thanks for your support and but communications right now. So how are um, some of the improvements that they're at, like you're gonna show us with some of the rails and things like that? Yeah, yeah we're working work through, to be very honest with you, I don't know, have you guys made it? Uh, is that, look at that, yeah. done. So the wall. I haven't been in the third. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. Excellent. So there you go. Which improvements are you talking about? I'm talking about this. We've got a permanent wall to separate the Them as Title I. 
Uh, Robert Morrison, bus driver for our position, effective this year by Diane Hill. Craig Kendrick and David Saylor are returning as teacher assistants at Multnomah County. Um, guys, they are with us every year. We have to not renew them every year. Same with our title teachers. We've received the funding that we're gonna have it back and we're bringing them back here ready to go. Our athletic coaches and supplemental, these are really our assistant coaches and game workers that you see coming up. That's what we are gonna have to pull out. Uh, Brady Knoll on that one here a little bit as an assistant coach. Um, Co-curricular supplemental contracts, that's in there as well. All that ambassadors, this is something every year. Kristen Smith and Lauren Safertides, they each receive a $500 stipend. They work with Alden and they work with our kids on healthy. So if you remember a couple years ago, they had a challenge set up where I was in a healthy eat, I think oranges or grapes contest against Dave Fisher from Sandy Valley. And just things to promote wellness. Beating. I did beat him, right? Yes, I did. Don't, wasn't losing to Sandy Valley. Don't worry, we got that ready to go. So um, <laughs> I say that now that I won. And then the next two here, Jordan Norris and Zoe Hain, who are here with us right now. Uh, we'd like to recommend that we hire them. First of all, Jordan Norris is a kindergarten teacher at Faircrest Lamar Elementary School. This is a one-year position as of right now, effective for this school year coming up. I wanna tell you just a little bit of a story about this. So over the weekend, I got together with my family for Father's Day, my sister and my brother-in-law are teachers at Plain Local. And while we were there, uh, my sister said to me, hey, do you have a guy by the name of Jordan Norris, a client? He's awesome, you really should look, look at him. He did a long-term sub for us as soon as he got out of college. Uh, that class with both his coaches just an awesome job he's great and I said well that's fantastic because I said he's on our board agenda Monday night to hire the kindergarten teacher which would have been really awkward if she would have said hey don't hire that guy at that point in time so with that and then with Zoe what I wanted to throw out there was Zoe came in and met with our elementary principal and it was like instantaneous the second she was done there was a phone call to me we've got to get her in for a second round we've got to get her hired right away I could not be there. Victoria Hesse, our special services director, was there. Um, and I'll be very honest, I had actually booked a, a weekend away. I was flying out on Friday to go to uh, Dallas to uh, see a baseball game. And I get a message uh, prior to even getting on the plane, hire this girl right away from Victoria Hesse. So we are really, really excited about having Zoe join us as well. Um, and she's gonna be an intervention specialist for us over at Faircrest Memorial Elementary School. So uh, I'd like to recommend that we hire all of them. Uh, item C, our donations. So guys, uh, this there's a lot coming in here, but we just wanna make sure we, this year, Marathon has donated $2,000 for our welding program. Dr. Larry A. Wood's donation to the Rosemary Johnson Scholarship of $500. An anonymous donation to Six Man Mentoring of $200. The next two that you're gonna see there from the taco truck and the Howlin Bird, uh, those are actors uh, donating a percentage of the food back from the night we have the Mitch Rossell Country Music Concert here. We have those food trucks out there and they're donating that back to us. Volleyball donations, you can see Interstate Paper, Taverns in Mansfield, Albright Welding Supply, Zebra Excavating, uh, Twice, Breck Row of Scales, The Lunch Angels. This is the payoff uh, lunch debt that were uh, acquired throughout the year. Susie and Randy Hine, 250, Tim and Gay Welker, 3696, Kathy Hine, 300, The Best Friends Baking Company, 650, Chad and Veronica McGabe, $100, Gina and Kim Gray, 25, Bill Wright, 250, Ray and Diane Swink, 200, uh, Mariel Jonas and John Mariel, $60, and then we have an anonymous donation of $5,000 to clear out that account uh, to make sure that, that all our kids' lunches were paid off. Um, this doesn't get said enough, and I wanna make sure, especially with Nick sitting right here, our Athletic Booster Club, what they do for, for our kids, is guys, they do so much, but these are the things that run through the athletic department of money that they donate through. This is, uh, you know, not just, like they do things for coaches, they do things, not specifically for coaches, but they pick up things coaches need for their teams. But these are things coming through. Um, and so these are the donations for the year here that the Booster Club has put in. $665.45 for exercise bands. Paid for our cheer routine, uh, which it takes a lot of work. I have lived in the world of cheerleading uh, with my wife and daughter and, uh, and I know it's a lot of money. $2,000 they paid to get that designed for us. A wrestling sled, $1,749. Girls golf, $500. Uh, trophy footballs for the football team with all the success that we that we had this year, just under $2,000. iPads for golf, $896. Perform better ropes for the weight room, $864. Huddle, which is something that all of our sports teams use, huge, uh, $500, or excuse me, $5,700. Whiteboards for girls and boys basketball, $2,800. And half the proceeds of the stadium signs, 
5,517. And then a washer and dryer for us to be able to do our own laundry and equipment here, $9,000 uh, on that. So just Nick, thank you very much. And anything? Yeah, I would like to uh, kind of uh, talk about the stadium signs. I yeah. know you were really uh, helped us get in to get it, uh, the signs put up in the stadium. We're trying to keep it really classy. I think it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. I mean, we split uh, half the proceeds with the athletic club or athletic office. The rest of it goes to Booster Club. And I think we've almost doubled since we did last year. That's great. So if you guys see anything we can do better, you know, and, and we're showcasing all these, you know, businesses that are in, you know, Canton Township and stuff like that. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. I mean, it's good advertising for the price. I think it's a it's a no-brainer. So I appreciate you letting us do that. Yep, if you guys got any comments or questions, please, you know, if we can do something better, we'll do it. But we're trying to keep it classy, everything looking the same, and uh, hopefully we'll keep growing this program as we go. Okay. Just, just thanks for all the hard, hard yeah. work, you and your team. Great job. Oh, appreciate it, Nick. Thank you very much. So guys, absolutely would like to recommend that we accept those graciously. Um, item E, the Ohio Coalition for Equity and Adequacy. I really want to make sure everybody's clear on what's happening here with this. We have authorized to join this back in our uh, January organizational meeting. But this is the time where they, you get $2 for every student that's enrolled in our district, and then that money goes to them. That money is going to be used in challenging the voucher system that is out there in the state of Ohio. And so it's something we have been a part of. There are over hundreds of schools across the state of Ohio that are in it. I believe we are 11 or 12 schools within the Star County but I think it's the right thing for us to, to do to make sure that money that was supposed to be set aside for public education stays with public education. And again, nothing against parent choice, nothing against the parents having that right. I firmly believe parents should have the right to choose what they need to do. But, but we just want to make sure that the money that was set aside, and, and I have to be very honest, my biggest frustration is these other schools can take that money and not have to follow the same guidelines or the rules that we do. They can kick kids out, keep the money. We see it with our friends at Kansas City. This happens to them all the time. But that money goes elsewhere, and they kick the kids out and send them back. So that's a big part of why I want us to be a part of this, and that what that recommendation is there on that one. I don't want the kids, no, sorry, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back. Overnight trips, I was very excited about my, my passion at the end. There you go. Um, hey, our, thanks, guys. Our overnight trips, guys, uh, Chris and Smith, um, this is for FOSA, this is one of our career tech organizations, a national competition. Uh, Mia Ray has the opportunity to go to uh, Houston, Texas. Kristen could not go with her family, so Jay Fabric, another one of our career tech teachers, stepped up. Luckily, his wife, Karen, is gonna go as well. We are only paying for Jay, though. I just wanna be very clear. If we see Jay and Karen, Karen is paying for her own flight. She will obviously stay in the room with her husband there, but uh, everything there, Jay will be paid for. If we'd like to recommend we do that, and Brittany Meyer would like to take, Myers would like to take her volleyball team to Cedar Point this summer. Really excited about them having that opportunity want to do that. So I've done D now, E, we'll skip over to F. Uh, Adam Hall, again, would like to put in to use our facility for the um, Wildcat Classic, February 3rd through the 9th. This is a huge fundraiser for our girls and boys basketball team. Um, and he's got the dates and everything set. We'd just like to get that approved now so he can do everything he can to get that promoted and out there. Item G, our lease agreement with Multi-County Juvenile Attention Center. This is exactly what Mr. Eibel came in and talked about. The cost is $5,000 per month for 10 months that gives us right to that facility over there. It is the exact same agreement as last year, just with the dates changed. So just so everyone's aware, I'd like to recommend we approve that. The last thing here on mine is the amended contract. This is um, for Mr. Stepanovich with uh, us taking Mr. Knoll's job of Director of Operations as we moved Chris to middle school principal and we broke everything up in there, Nick has taken on the custodial. And one of the things about custodial is that doesn't stop all summer long. And so Nick's gonna need to come back in in July and be in here doing some different things, checking on you know, work, checking on time off, making sure everything's organized. So we'd like to add those five days right now. We're doing it as a one year, kind of see how everything goes, we'll regroup. And as we set contracts and stuff for next year, we'll be able to look at it. But we'd like to do that. Nick would be paid at his daily rate for those five days, and I'd like to recommend that we do that. And I think that's all, unless I skipped anything else, because we went through it. So, all right, perfect. Uh, can I get a motion to accept the superintendent's report items A through H, except for Exhibit D1, Reagan and Lawrence? So moved. Second? I'll second. Questions or concerns? 
Right. So will we um, hire another title then? We will, yes. So we'll post yep, that? Yep, for that will be posted and okay. we will hire another title uh, out there as well. Most likely at the August meeting. That changes our permanent stuff on there as right. well with everything. So. Okay. Is that the only unfilled teaching position? That is not, that's right now the only unfilled teaching position right now, yes. Yep, we still have a secretary position that, that's out there, um, a custodial position that is out there right now. Um, and so those will get going, but that's our only teaching position that's now unfilled. Anything else? That's good. Okay. Mr. Schatz, when we go to roll. Dr. Hall? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Mr. Knight? Aye. Mr. Kovetsky? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Okay, I'll make a motion that we vote on Raven Hall. Second. Any questions or concerns? Shots will call the roll. Dr. Mullen? Abstain. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Mr. Knight? Aye. Mr. Kovetsky? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Any informational items? Uh, just on uh, the legislature just went back into the STEM, just went back into session today. So, but one thing I do have in my and watch, and it was kind of going along with some of the things that you talked about with, in terms of these vouchers, uh, the Senate Bill 261 is uh, regard to the auditing of chartered non-public schools. So that's going to be interesting to follow. It's a partisan bill. Uh, one party, of course, is totally against any kind of audit for the chartered schools, and one uh, party is definitely wanting to see where that money is going. So uh, it'll be an interesting battle and one to watch to see how it uh, comes out. But uh, so. Watching that to see if, if we get an audit of those charter schools and see exactly where that money's going and kind of follow up what you were talking about, you know, how that money's used and where it goes and why. Yep. So that's all I have. Okay. <clears throat> Any more concerns on that? Okay. Questions pertaining to the agenda or the board action?
recommendation on that day as well, so I did not see you on that day, but Jason can make the recommendation and we'll, I'll send out notice um, within the guidelines and we'll try to send it out, Steve's email about it now, we'll let him get it sent out about a week in advance, um, hopefully we have the agenda this afternoon, so. Okay. All right, that's all I have. Tom, Tom, I got one thing, I just yeah. want to uh, pass on, express my condolences to uh, Coach Rowland's family. Second. Mr. Sasso, call the roll. Mr. Zemecki? Aye. 